they proclaim. And to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Why? Because the, not just Israel going through tribulation, but every nation is too. Right. And this gospel had to be proclaimed throughout the nations. Mm -hmm. And it did, didn't it? Mm -hmm. By the time Corinthians, by the time Paul came and let us know that the gospel was preached to every creature under the sun, now I have to continue. It started back in the days of the apostles. Go ahead and continue. Saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the honor, for the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him that is made, excuse me, and, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of the waters. Wait a minute. He needs for us to worship him that made the sea and the fountains of water. Now, this is the gospel being preached. Y'all need to stop worshiping this beast. Go ahead and read verse 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen. Is fallen that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. All right. All right, look what we just read. We done read here that a messenger went out into the world to bring out this gospel, didn't we? Then, while this gospel is being brought out, a message is being brought out, Babylon is fallen. The one who made all what? Nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. How in the world, what were they drinking? Remember, it's perplexity among the nations. Okay? But what in the world were they drinking to receive the wine of the wrath that's going to come upon Babylon? Hold your marker here. Let's go, if you will, to, ver to chapter Revelation chapter 18. We don't have many scriptures left on this. Revelation chapter 18. They drunk of the wine and the wrath of her fornication. This was the message to all the nations. Stop drinking. What was what was it? Revelation 18, <coughs> verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Uh-huh, verse 3, notice this. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Oh, now we throw economics and commerce in this thing. Mm -hmm. Mercantilism. <laughs> this is the societies that have been being built in this earth. Mercantilism. Why are the people drinking of the wrath and going to suffer when the Creator comes? Because they have been drinking of the wine and the wrath of Babylon. They have, they have been pursuing mercantilism. That's what we all been taught to pursue. Whether, you, whether you're trying to be rich or you're just trying to pay rent. That's where we at. A consumer. Look. He said you got to drink, right? Let's skip down to verse 7. How much she had glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Uh huh. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine. And she shall be utterly burned with fire for strong is the Lord God. Who judges her? Now we're taking this, we're taking a little while here because remember the messengers came out and told the people, repent and worship the God that made the heaven and the seas and the fountains. And he came with the same message saying Babylon is fallen. Now we're going further to understand why Babylon is fallen. Because it let us know she has lived gloriously and glorified herself in verse 7. And lived deliciously. Now, I want to continue this one a little bit. Verse 9. This is the fornication that's being committed. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her, for they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off oh, for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, that mighty city, for one hour 
is thy judgment come? Well, who's weeping? The kings, the merchants, the merchants, everyone who benefited, the mighty men, everyone who benefited. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, continue. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn her, mourn over her, for no man buyeth her merchandise anymore. Wait a minute now. Stocks and bonds are gone. The consumer reports are no longer relevant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the economy isn't buying. It goes right here. Go ahead and notice what they won't be buying no more. The merchandise of gold and silver and, and precious stones. Your and jewelers pearls. and your diamond rings and your necklaces that they show all over the world in, in your commercials today. Mm -hmm. There's no longer traffic for that. And fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet. All of your fine clothes, you find that with, uh, 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 with what was the name? Lords and Taylors and, and JCP, all of that. Whole textile industry crumbling. And all thy iron wood, and all manner vessels of ivory, and all manner vessels of most precious wood, and of brass and iron and marble. Iron, marble, all the precious materials, whether your cars, your planes, your locomotives. And cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses your and steaks, chariots your breads everything that you buy in the grocery stores and slaves and that you buy in the markets that they still traffic in the day mm -hmm. and slaves and souls of men and what souls, souls of, of men. men they bought and sold souls of men influence gain the world and lose your soul how does it gain the world and lose your soul Man. do you understand because of this commerce because of this system of commerce, which we know today, it went from a feudalist system to a capitalist industrialist system, which bring in oppression, exploitation, and distresses upon every single ethnic group on this planet. And it grows on. It just goes on. Every one of them. To the whole chapter, how they're going to be wailing and murked and crying. Crying because the economics don't fail. When you leave Revelation 18, it takes you to Revelation 19, don't it? And Revelation 19 sets it off with what? The coming of the Lord. Soon as the economic system drop out, Revelation 19 brings you right into the coming of Christ. And whatever fell through, the saints were now going to possess the earth and its materials. We have to understand that great distress and perplexity among the nations is because of this economic global system, which John and Revelation call in Babylon. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. How did it set off? Industrial capital got a big push through the great Atlantic slave trade. Or should I say properly, the triangular. Because it wasn't just slaves, was it? Right. It was cinnamon, spices, gold. Mm -hmm. You understand? Animals. Molasses. Livestock. Molasses. Even transporting uh, 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 vegetation. It's like he calling it all the markers. All the whole market of gain. It, this is the break. This is what the, the book we warning us about. This is what's causing our distresses. The system. The system. I'm going to tell you, when a person is trying to eat, and the only thing they can eat is the most detestable foods that the capitalists re release to us because it unrobbed us of land. Oodles and noodles, white sugar, Natural white sugar. bread, stuff that is totally destroys the body, and then they enslave us through the pestilence with their prescription medicines. Mm -hmm. Enslave us to be drawn to their uh, schools of medicine. Because remember, they didn't teach us about herbs and, and how to help ourselves in school, did they? Mm -hmm. They taught us to be totally dependent in school, didn't they? Mm -hmm. How many of us grew up in the winter climate? I keep saying this, but I grew up in the winter climate. Yeah, one class, what name me one class when we made our own winter coat? <laughs> Wouldn't that be reasonable though? Mm -hmm. If you're going to teach the people how to survive without the well-being, you need to teach them how to make a coat and boots. Mm -hmm. Right? Isn't that what mama knew how to make? Mm -hmm. Didn't mama know how to make, didn't she know how to make long johns at one time or another? Mm -hmm. Huh? I didn't go have to buy them from a capitalist structure called Walmart, which sucked. The economy it or close down every business. Close down every business in the area. That's right. And then leave. When people broke, can't spend no more. Economics, people, the book is big. We concentrate on ash wings and no mark on your forehead. That's all you got to look at? You messed up. Look, economics. 
Hear me what I'm trying to explain. What verse you stop at here in Revelation 18? Or here in this book. We stopped at verse um at, at verse 13. If you want you want to read another one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is good stuff right here. This this is everything. Verse 14. And the fruits of thy soul lusted after are departed from thee. Everything you lusted after. Not only do the rich have it, but the poor, remember the poor was to receive the mark. That's right. Because they don't want it. They lusted after it. Right. Poor people coming from India, poor people coming from Africa, poor people coming from China, coming to Western Europe, coming to America to go to their schools because they lusted after the development. Mm -hmm. the, they're, they're playing up for all of them to stay here. They want them to go back they, home to, to develop set up the market, mm -hmm. to set up the same model yeah, of capitalist true, yeah. uh, economy in their own countries. Really unburdened. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> this is what the people been lusting after. This is why our kids go to school, isn't it? What you go to school for? Cause you just like being schooled. No, you go to school to get a good job. You want to go get the certificate to get the good job. So you can eat steak for once in a while and not just cheese and bread. Right? So you don't have to catch the bus, but you can ride in that nice car. This is the persuasion, isn't it? And stuff that we talking, oh, them cats are, no, they just don't, they don't let the devil steal your blessings. Isn't that what they say? Don't let the devil steal your blessings from you. God wants you to be prosperous. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true, but which one? Right. They go to scripture and say, you know, God wants to live life and life more abundant. Yeah, that's where they go, right? Yeah, they go but straight They sure enough don't read when Satan came to Messiah and said, you know what? It's been given in my hand to give you all of the glory and the riches of the kingdom. All you got to do is worship me. It's been given in my hand to give it to you. We got to understand this. We got to go back to the basics, the true church, the, the nations, those who were clothed in white robes, they came out of this system and went back to the basics of Christ. Okay? Go ahead and what else they find? He said, everything you lusted after, I departed from thee. And all things which were dainty and goodly, I departed from thee. And thou shalt find them no more at all. And you shall find them no more at all. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, yes, sir. shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. And they're only going to stand afar off for a minute, because you know what else going to happen? They're going to start to do what? Run to the rocks and mountains. Mm -hmm. That's what they're going to start to do, too. That's what the other scripture let us know. That's what you do in war break, huh? That's what you do, uh huh? And that, that's what you do in war break, right? Eh? Running for shelter, isn't that true? Because right, right. right. they're going to see the light, wrath of the Lamb coming, mm -hmm. bringing war upon the nation. Mm -hmm. Look, look at verse 17. For in one hour, so great riches is come to <coughs> all, and every shipmaster, and all the company in ships, and sailors, and as many as trade by sea stood afar off. Mm -hmm. All of the customs officials, trade men, and all of the shipping industry, all of that is done. Do you see what we're saying here? Yes, sir. Go back to Revelation 14, because he said, Whoa, Babylon is falling. Said, and all of those who drunk of her delicacies, those are the ones who are going to eat of the, or taste of the wrath of God. We just had to show you that to, to, to face the wrath of God, that means what? You're going to fully partake mm -hmm. in the delicacies of everything you have lust for. Those who don't want to partake, you're going to get starved oh. out. Go back to Revelation 14. I want to read a little bit. This is a good book. Marxism, the science of society. All right, this was written, written by Kenneth Cameron. Marxism, the science of society. People afraid of Marx. The capitalists want you to be afraid of Marx. Look, remember we read that there would be distress upon the nations? Marx was in one of those nations. He just happened to be in Europe. And the oppression that they were facing in, in, in Russia against the Tsars. What did him and Engels see? I'll read this one. This is page 69 under capitalism. Please pay attention. Please. As Engels looked out over the new sea of human misery, remember distresses and perplexity. Right. What's the name of that book again, brother? This is Marxism, the Science of Society. Gotcha. As Engels looked out over the new sea of human misery created by industrial capitalist exploitation, he asked himself, 
how was it all to end? What did he see through industrial capitalists? Human misery and exploitation, right? Mm -hmm. Capitalism was an economic system based upon private property and in the, and in the industrial means of production. This is totally contrary to Christ's teaching, isn't it? He said share and social lies property. Capitalism is built upon private property. Now, this is mine. In the industrial means of production, the worker was a new kind of slave. So after they let us go as slaves in the field, the factories became the new workhouses. Right? The worker became a new kind of slave. Held not by, held, held not by legal, but economic bonds. The slave of the whole bourgeoisie, which bought and sold him like any other commodity in a profit control market. The workers receive back only a small portion of what they earn by their work. They made the machines and operated the factories, but the capitalists owned them. The capitalist system was one of the ruthless profit making and competition. Every few years, it collapsed in an economic crisis. That's right. He called it was one of the ruthless profit making and competition. This is the capitalist system. Great distresses upon the land, upon the nations. I'm gonna read one more before I close out of here, mm. out of this book. So too. With paid workers in the feudal and slave commercial societies, as feudalism developed into commercial feudal society, surplus value must have reigned supreme in the European manufacturing towns in the centuries before capitalism became the dominant system. So you have feudalism, the capitalism, okay? The transition to industrial capitalism was not, as we have seen, a change from bucolic co the bu a bucolic cottage system. And he's going to explain what a cottage system is. With the worker owning his machines, but a development of a basically exploitive system. With the workers, either in factories or home industry, owning nothing. <clears throat> into a more extensively organized exploitive system. There has never been nothing like this before. Never. You could be poor years ago, but you could have a few sheep and still make your clothes. But now this system is so complex that it binds you through technology now. They don't want to give us no banking system to help us because they don't want robbers to take our money. They want to control every aspect. They took away our means of production. Now they want to make sure that they understand how much money we got and control that as well. Drop it all in the bank. But you only can withdraw 500 a day. I thought about my money though. <laughs> if I got to get out of town tonight, you mean I got to wait till tomorrow till y'all open? See, all this is just screwed up. But they own the means of production. Now, with that, if they own how you make toilet tissue, if they own how you make clothes, if they build everything, if they supply you with everything, they sell you your food in these strange markets, how are, we, how are you going to live now without them telling you what to do? So now if you're rich, you're poor, right? If you're poor, you, hey, I got to eat. So you strive to do what? Be a part of the capitalist exploitive system? Look, this is, as Engels put it, brought distresses upon the nations of the world, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Back to Revelation chapter 14. And Israel is right there in the mix, right? Mm -hmm. Remember he said, the land of your enemies shall eat you up? Well, they own all the means of production. You understand what I'm saying? They eating up. All the legislation is against you. But, well, like what you're saying, the same as the Messiah has put it, as we see in front of our face, it's not just this thing, this tribulation is going to come at one time it's going to be like a month and all these things are going to happen. Right. Tribulation has been a gradual process and has to be. So it can be four to five for each step. So it can roll down and be indestructible. Right. Right. Same thing you have with, 
So same thing now. We talked about eminent domain 12 years ago. But if you look at all the steps, if you live in a city, of everything they've been putting in staging in with the medical corridor and all these things, these steps have been put in here. And it's not just Buffalo. No, it's not just Buffalo. Everywhere. But you all in the metropolitan places. But from the pulpits, you won't hear this this sense of emergency, this this education of what is actually going on because they can't put those things in the realm of the teaching of the Messiah. To them, these things don't exist. Don't exist. And you talk a Sunday pulpit, we're gonna get back here to Revelation 14. Right. I'm talking about Hebrews that I know I spoke of, like mm -hmm. the class we had left. Right. I'm talking to people who live out of town who go to there, who, well, who's leaving these places. And when I presented this to them, the, the brother who was sincere that I spoke to in Georgia, the brother seen this. And he had let me know he seen it. He said, man, he said, man, but people ain't going to be wanting a man share their house and stuff that they worked hard for. He's talking about people in the Sabbath class. So all the people in your Sabbath class, you mean to tell me you know that they ain't going to want to do this? Then are they saved? Do they love one another like Christ loved them? Well, where you at then? Mm -hmm. You know, what does it add up to? Good question. You mean to tell me they can't sacrifice <coughs> that beautiful car they got? No, because they they have been consumed in the system. Mm -hmm. And yet they may keep the Sabbath day or the feast days, but their hearts is pursuing the pleasures and lust of what Babylon the Great got to offer. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. Mm -hmm. Now back here. So he warned them about this. Come on, let's, let's see what we get out of here. Yeah. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 7. Verse 7. Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory. No, no, we read, I'm sorry, we read that. We're going back to Revelation 14. 14. 14 and 9, I'm sorry. Revelation 14. 14 and 9, yes, sir. 14 and 9, okay. Right. Verse 9. And a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Now notice what's happening. In verse 8, he let us know about Babylon the Great. And the nations drinking of her wine. They drunk of the wine also entailed them participating in the economic global system and re reaping these delicacies. Mm -hmm. Now, what is he bringing this? Any man who received the mark of the beast? Mm -hmm. Isn't that what he, any man who shall drink? Oh, I'm sorry, where we at? What, what, what? Any man who shall worship the beast in his image? Right. Why is he bringing the beast into play right now? We're going to show you. If any man worship the beast in his image, he got the wrath of God to look to, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and continue. <laughs> Which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb of God. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And the smoke of the torment shall ascend up forever and ever. And they shall have, and they... Excuse me, they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Yes. Mm. Wait a minute. This look, look what's happening. The beast. The messengers that went out and told the people to repent to serve God. Then he let us know about the fall of Babylon, which is the fall of the beast system. When you go to Revelation 18, this is describing the fall of the beast economic system. Now he's letting us know that, look, any man worshiping the beast, why would you worship the beast? Mm. It's your life. Yes. Why in the world would you even be worshiping him? Because you are pursuing the lust and the delicacies that was offered on its markets. And any man worshiping the beast, man, you're going to suffer the wrath of God. Why would you worship the beast because you want to be a part of the mercantilism? Why would you worship him? Because this is the requirement that's going to be given. Let's go to Revelation chapter 13. This is a requirement. You can be a part of our system, but you got to be branded with our, uh, with our, uh, what you call it? Our stigma. It's like you go, man, listen, man. I don't believe in capitalism. I don't believe in Christmas, the mercantile festivals, and all of the... You have a cat who come up and tell you, you are not American. 
Mm -hmm. All you gotta do is tell them what you don't participate in. They I say you are un American. That's right. But if you are American, what are you? You Roman citizen. Because <laughs> Roman declare I'm a, we the second Rome. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you are American, you are identical, look in the mirror version of the Roman citizen. Mm -hmm. And the number of the Roman citizen was what? Six. Six, six hundred and sixty six, man. Mm -hmm. People concentrating just on the Pope of Rome. No, the citizen was 666. Latinos. Latinos. Add it up. Mm -hmm. It's 666. So if you are a citizen of the system, oh, you believe in everything. You participate in the job market. Oh, you just want to get the pill, heal, and you, you know, yeah. You, 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 you're going to be a part of it. Your heart going to be there. Remember that old crazy movie that said, listen, if Jesus Christ himself told me not to go to school, I wouldn't listen. Was that school days? You doggone right it was a school days. Y'all remember that, that skit? Uh -huh. That's how important the college education got to. And that was a scam, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. People said, oh man, you should up here talking about them. Well, listen here. You know doggone well that that was a whole scam for them capitalists to push that Negro college fund and all that college stuff. Mm -hmm. And we'll show you why in other teachings. Mm -hmm. Because all they got now is a greater number of what to choose from. Proletarians. They got more people to choose from. Hey, if I need somebody to make this manure right here, and only too few people know how to make it, and I need it made, then they can bargain for a big price. Nah, man, in order for me to make it for you, you know, man, I want a hundred dollars to make that. Well, I fix that. I get about ten thousand y'all who know how to make this. You understand what I'm saying? And out of that ten thousand, gonna be a few of y'all who hungry. I'm not gonna pay you hundred, but I pay you twenty five. I'll take that twenty five. If you poor and can't eat, I need my kid and I'll be like me. So I'm gonna try to push them into the education system, go to college, become that next doctor, mm -hmm. that next uh -huh. military great general, uh -huh. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Rush into the system, that's where your hope of success that's is. That's where your hope of success is. That's right. And over people ain't paying attention to over education. You know attorneys coming out of law school making seventeen dollars an hour. Did y'all hear about that? Yeah, I heard it. You understand what I'm saying? How an attorney? Because there's too many of them. Doctors and everything else, you pushing them all out, they think they, they look, but those other teachers. Right, go ahead. Look at this here in, in, in here. He said, look, they should drink of the wrath, right? Yes. Why is it that if those who worship the beast gonna receive this mark? Because it is here. Revelation 13 and read verse 11. That's why he said, everyone who worships the beast shall be destroyed. Notice this. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Uh -huh. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. Now we can show you through other teachers. This is the United States of America. I'm putting it plain. We got teachers to prove this down to the letter. Okay? This is the beast that came up right after the fall of the Roman Empire. Or should I say the papacy? Because the papacy carried the Roman Empire until the 1700s. Napoleon knocked them off. 1700s is exact century in which the United States of America is becoming inaugurated. Chapter 13. Huh? Chapter 13. Chapter 13. Chapter 13. Revelation 13 and 11. We just read it, right? We just read 11. You see another beast coming up, right? Verse 12. And he exercises all the power of...
Antichrist shall exercise all of the power of the first beast, which was Rome. America exercised all the power of the first beast, which is none other today is what? Rome today is what? Western Europe, right? So therefore, America used to be backwards, right? But now it climbed to the status of a world power. <clears throat> okay? Let's continue to read this. <clears throat> Just like Western Europe. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. Uh-huh. And caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Now remember what we read in Revelation 14? All who worship the beast shall be tormented and destroyed by the Creator. America is going to cause the world to worship the first beast. Do you know where capitalism and the profession of capitalism come from? Western Europe. What Rome? Rome got it from who? The Greeks. They begin to individualize and privatize land. All right. He gonna cause them to worship the beast, right? What verse you stop at? Stop at verse twelve. Let's skip down, if you will, my brother. Verse sixteen. Notice this now. Everybody gonna have to worship the beast or else. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Uh huh. That no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Now everybody who get this mark gonna be destroyed. Now you ain't. Now he done brought what into this picture again? Mercantilism, commerce, economics. That's why, in order for you to buy that cinnamon, that gold, them slaves, you gonna have to become an integral part of the system. If you reject the system, what happens? You get sanctions. I keep bringing it up, and I'm bringing it up so we can understand it today. Did Cuba reject capitalism? Yes. Have they been sanctioned? Yes. Can they buy and sell with the world? No. No. Look at what we're dealing with. Karl Marx. He reject capitalism. They sanctioned him. The man couldn't find work. His children died through the poverty he went through. Some of his children died because he was so poor. They, they sell his books like hotcakes. The man died in poverty. Him and his wife sanctioned him. This is the reason why we go to Cuba. We see their vehicles are still in the 50s when it was capitalism. When it, they, they got that left, right? Right. So there's no modern in the sense of what we got modern. And it's heavy sanctions. Mm. Can you go to Cuba, buy yourself some cigars, and come back here and sell them? No. You can't even go to Cuba from the United States, can you? No. Until your man, Obama, let a little leeway up where they can make contact. Hey, they're going to shut that down real quick. But sanctions, sanctions, sanctions. <coughs> you will not be able to buy or sell unless you're going to worship the beast. Sure. Fidel Castro refused to worship him. And his people there in Cuba are suffering and in distress. And that's what they say, see? He's a tyrant. And they'll call him a tyrant because his people suffer. That's what they say, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because these people are so damnable ignorant that they don't realize now it's the beast who put a sanction on them. So you won't be able to buy nor sell unless you had a mark of the beast or the number of names. Is that what you read? Mm -hmm. Now we can understand why them people went through that time of trouble, people. So who's going through this? The world, aren't they? Didn't he said what? He looked upon the miseries of the people of the world. These those who survived this teaching, that going through the teachings of Christ are the ones who what? They shall make their robes white, right? Let's end it going through these seals real quick. Revelation 6. Keep your mind in Revelation 6 in the book of Matthew. Revelation 6, 1 and 2. Let's close out going through these six. Revelation 6, 1 and 2. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. One of the seals. One of the things. He opened up one of the mysteries. When he opened it up, what did he see? And I heard, as it were, the noise of a thunder. One of four beasts saying, Come and see. He said, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth.
conquering and to conquer. Wait a minute. Now, all of this has to go and play with the world going through tribulation. You see a white horse. Upon his horse, there was a crown given, right? Mm -hmm. And a bow. And it says, and he went forth conquering. That means he was successful. Mm -hmm. And he went forth to conquer. Bear with me a little bit, people. Bear with me a little bit. This is the white horse. Who is this? Go to Daniel chapter 7 real quick. Then we're going to go to Matthew. Daniel 7. 7 and 7. Jesus opened up these seals. Didn't it tell us in the book of Revelation that the Lion of Judah had prevailed to open up the seals of the book? He opened up these mysteries. And the seal's not going to be, we're not doing a whole seal lesson. It's a quick overview. But I, I, I do got to read this, Daniel, so you can understand this white horse. And I'm doing this to answer the question here. After this, you can take it where you want. You can pursue it to learn more about it, or you can toss it behind your back, let it be wandered under a bridge. To me, it ain't going to make no much of a difference. I'm concerned. If you're not, then okay. I can't be concerned about you being not concerned. You know. So look at this in Daniel 7 and 7. Daniel 7 and 7. This women, we were following about this white horse that went forth to conquer. He conquered, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And he went forth to conquer. Right. Go ahead and read. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast. We talking about a beast again. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth. It devoured and brake in pieces and stamped the residue with the with the feet of it. Go ahead, brother. And as it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. So you seen a beast come up, and it had ten horns. Go to the next. Go ahead, verse eight. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them, look, there came up among them another little horn. Another little horn. Probably he said another because there was a little horn under the Greek kingdom too, right? Mm -hmm. But now we're looking at another little horn. Go ahead. Before and whom? Before whom? There were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, this is the horn. Behold, this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. Now, this horn popped up. We understand this to be the papal office. He didn't pop up the Herolites. He didn't knock off the Herolites, the Vandals, and the Ostrogoths because of their religion. He knocked them off because of political power. That they opposed. He wanted to be ultimate king and ruler. So he plucked them up, right? Let's skip down to verse 19, though. Because he wanted to know a little bit more about the little horn. This kingdom. Who ultimately the Holy Roman Empire come from. This is how it was started. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast. Uh-huh. Which was diverse from all the others. Oh, he was different from all others. Exceeding dreadful whose teeth were of iron, and his nails of brass which devoured, breaking pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. Then it said that this crown, he was given a crown, he went forth conquering. And to conquer. And to conquer. We're looking at a development here of a mighty empire, okay, with the little horn influence that's going forth destroying everything. Go ahead and continue. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than of his fellows. Go ahead, brother. Behold, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against him. So he's prevailing. He's conquering. This little horn is hooked up to a beast, though, isn't it? The Roman Empire. Let's go back now. So we go this way. This way we want to do our things here. Matthew 24. He opened up the seal. <clears throat> Messenger said, Come look at it, man. Come see. He went to go look. And you might not see this in the beginning. But you're going to see as we go through the 
finish off with these seals. Matthew chapter 24, verse 4, reads what? Matthew 24, verse 4. Yes, sir. Matthew 24, verse 4. Notice this. And Jesus said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Uh huh. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now you might not see it yet, what I'm about to explain, but you will. He said, Many shall come in my name and say, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Mm -hmm. Okay? Who come? Who is he warning us about? We have to understand the foundations of, of Catholicism. The Holy Roman Empire began when Constantine converted to what? Christianity. Christianity. He began to conquer in the name of who? Christ. Christ. And he used the cross. Mm -hmm. Then it said his wife had the vision of the cross. The Ethiopians celebrate that festival every year. Mm -hmm. He said, in this, symbol, in this symbol will I conquer. This was the form of an empire conquering in the name of Christ. Remember Christ said, don't be deceived. Many shall come in my name and deceive many. Through Constantine, as the Holy Roman Empire collapsed, or Imperial Rome, then the development of the Little Horn began to carry on that religious, political aspect of the empire under the papacy. He continued it. All right? However, we're starting with Christ and many shall come on my name saying I am Christ and deceive many. Constantine would have been one of these guys. Jesus is Christ. Whitney, the man converted to Christianity, one of the Peter Patmos baptizing, I'm not mistaken. But now, this is going to begin the crusades and everything else. You understand what I'm saying, people? So now we see one going forth to conquer. A white horse. Why is it white? Because symbolism and white. Didn't Christ own a white horse? You understand what I'm saying? So the symbolism is showing some type of purity or righteousness. He conquered in the name of Jesus. This is the empire. Rome. This was the empire in existence why John and Jesus was making these revelations. You understand what I'm saying? What's the next seal? Go back to Revelation now. This white horse went forth to conquer. This began the Holy Roman Empire's work. It converted to Christianity in the third century. Then this empire began to take on the, 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 uh, 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 the banner of Jesus and the cross. Imperial Rome collapsed. The papacy, the little horn, continued to, he continued to hold it up. He held it up for 1,260 years. Until Napoleon came and took away his authority. He held it up for a time, time and a half of times. He held it up for 42 months. 1,260 years exactly. From 570 A.D. until 1798 A.D. was 1,260 years. Time, time and a half of times. This is the reign of papers he had to change times, laws, Christmas, everything. To turn the whole world Roman Catholic. And we're going to learn once this horse began to gallop in the imperial Rome when it converted to Christianity it was given power to go forth conquering and to conquer and Jesus described them as saying many shall come in my name saying I am Christ the only reason why so many, Christ, so many people believe in Jesus now is because of the work of the Holy Roman Empire you don't believe me do you they want you to say Jesus was Christ that's why we have the preachers today this all came from an imperial uh, empire, though. Mm -hmm. Look, what was the next seal? Can somebody read that next seal for me? Back in Revelation 6. And verse 3. Verse 3. Notice the next seal. Remember the, remember the white horse, horse is going forth to conquer. Mm -hmm. What happens after you're going forth to conquer? Go ahead, bro. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. Come see. And there went out another horse that was red and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. Wait a minute. If the white horse is going forth to conquer and conquering, that's taking peace from the earth. Notice what we read it. The red horse galloping now. It's a cause and effect. He's going forth 
to conquer. Now we see the red horse coming to take peace from the earth. Go ahead and continue. And that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. So what we have coming. Jesus is about to break the seal open for us. Many shall come in my name, Santa M. Christ. Constantine started to gallop with this thing, convert to Christianity. Mm -hmm. Roman Empire went forth to conquer and to conquer. This led off into great wars. Destroying the Ostrogoths, the Vandals, the, the, uh, the Huguenots being killed and the people thrown to lions and all of this renaissance and all of this going on through all of these past couple of uh, millennia. Now look at this. The red horse represents what? Peace being taken from the earth and a great sword, right? Mm -hmm. What did Jesus say there? Let's go back to Matthew. You should have your marker there. Matthew chapter uh, 24 verse 6. Let's see if he's going to describe the red horse. Matthew 24 and 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Isn't that what you get when you take peace from the earth? Mm -hmm. <laughs> wars and rumors of wars. Because he set forth conquering and to conquer. That's going to bring rumors too, right? If I'm about to conquer this spot over here. Yeah. Rumors of wars going to start to come. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? First they heard the rumor of Titus coming, didn't they? Right. Or Vespasian. Right. Then Titus. Then a war took place. Did he conquer them? Conquer. Absolutely. But it was going to be developed now under this white horse because yeah, it was the stench. It was bringing Jesus' name into this thing. Go ahead and finish that verse. I'm sorry, brother. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. See that you be not troubled. But the end is not yet. No, nah, but the end not yet. Is this the red horse there? For there shall be what he said? Wars. And rumors of wars. Or the revelator said, a red horse taking peace from the earth and a great sword was given to him. Right? Wars. Rumors of wars. Let's go back now, if you will, to uh, Revelation chapter 6. What's the next seal? Open it up. Revelation chapter 6. We're almost out of here. We're just going to finish up these seals. Go ahead. Verse Five. Revelation 6 and 5. And when he had opened the third seal. Third seal opening up. I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And behold, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. Go ahead, bro. And I heard the voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. Now this is this is scarce. This is scarce barley and scarce wheat. Remember, when a man worked in a parable, didn't he promise them all day wages of a penny? For the whole day, wage was a penny. It ain't a penny we see now laying in the streets. Notice what he's saying. A whole day's wage will get you no more than a measure of barley. Or what is it, a measure of wheat? And three measures of barley. Either one. A whole day's wage could barely get you enough to make a loaf of bread. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And the oil, oil and wine is precious. Oil. You understand what I'm saying? We're looking at some type of famine, a control famine, whatever you want to call it, some type of scarcity. Black horse. Did you finish that? Yes, indeed. Yes, sir. Now, let's see if Christ going to desc describe some kind of famines to take place. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. This was the third seal. Matthew 24, when you get it, let's start reading that verse 9. I'm sorry, verse 7. Let's see if he's going to describe something that's going to fit under this black horse. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence, and earthquakes and diverse places. There shall be what? Famine. Famines and pestilence. And diseases. Mm -hmm. That black horse with the two balances in his hand. Remember? Right. Famine and pestilence. This is a result of war and conquering to conquer, isn't it? You see, it's cause and results. Once these horses start, they continue until Christ comes. That's right. They don't ever stop. They're going on right now. We still hear wars and rumors of wars, pestilence, famines. We hear this all over the world. You understand what I'm saying? But it was to begin when, even in their days. Now he, Christ, has opened up the third seal. This is trouble upon the earth. And what was the pursuit of the papal authority? World dominion people, riches, commerce, 
they reign under the feudal system. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Now where we stop at there? Where we at? We just read Matthew 24. We read Matthew 24, verse 7. Did you read verse 8? You read 8 too, I think. No. All these are the beginning of sorrows. But the end is not yet, right? All these are the beginning of sorrows. Why is he saying this? Why is he saying this? Before we do it, let's go back to Revelation 6. All these are the beginning of sorrows, people. This was the beginning. This is when it began to start two millenniums ago. And it's got worse and worse and worse. Now even the weapons that they make will destroy everything. Everything. But this is all a part of the Great Tribulation. This was bringing the perplexities and distresses among the nations. Somebody told us this was just to take place in three and a half years. I don't believe that. Not literal years. Where we at now? Revelation 6, mm -hmm. verse 7. What's the next horse that's going to start? And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard a voice of the fourth beast say, Come see. Uh huh. And I looked. And behold, a pale horse. A pale one coming now. And his name that sat on him was death. Isn't that what's hell. Gonna, isn't that what's gonna be the result of that white horse, death and hell? Mm -hmm. Isn't that gonna be the result of that black horse with the famines? Death and hell? Isn't that gonna be the result of the red horse that took peace from the earth? That's right. Death and hell. This red horse is the pale horse. Is the is I'm sorry, the pale horse. It, yeah, the finale or, or, or the overall, uh, 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 what do you call that word? Uh, accumulate. Uh, uh, cumulative effects. The accumulative effect. Like That's that. right, bro. Like you like that? I like that. Like that. <laughs> I had the Lord work with his tongue right so there. That <laughs> roll right off there. The, exactly. Right. <laughs> see what I'm saying? Do you see this is all leading up to this red horse? That's right. I mean to the pale horse. Right. Now. The pale horse is shown. Go ahead and finish that with this pale horse. Sorry. You, step, hey, you read no, verse 7, right? Uh, uh -huh. And I looked and behold, a pale horse, his name that sat on him was death and hell. Death and hell. Followed with him. And power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. And he was to go forth and concentrate on the quarter part of the earth. Now, what else is to take place, people? We got four seals being opened. Okay? Four seals being opened. Go back to Matthew 24 and 9. When we almost out of here. We got five texts. <clears throat> Matthew 24 and 9. What does that say? Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated. Of all nations for my name's sake. Who shall be delivered up? Those in Jerusalem. No. The saints. Oh, the saints. I'm sorry. I tried the saints. The saints. I'm sorry. They shall deliver you up. And they shall kill you, right? Mm -hmm. They shall deliver us up and be killed. Verse 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And Caesar and Christ. Didn't we read about this in the early church? That Rome thought them to be a left wing band of communists mm -hmm. secretly to usurp the authority of the Roman Empire. So they shall deliver you up and they shall kill you. Go over to Luke real quick so we can look at it a little further because Luke will add more to this. Luke 21. <gasps> they shall deliver you up and kill you. All of this started in the days of the apostles as well, but it's interesting that all of this actually going to start first. Meaning, them deliver you up. Watch what did Luke say. It's interesting how this going to fit in with the seal. We're almost out of here. Luke 21 and 11. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines and pestilence, and fearful sights and great signs shall be there from heaven. So he... Before he looking at these seals, right? Mm -hmm. So before these seals open up, notice what he's gonna say in verse twelve. But before all these, but before all these, they shall lay their hands on you. Notice before these seals are opened up, they shall lay their hands on you. Who are we talking to? 
the early church, <clears throat> the apostles. Before this, they shall lay their hands on you. Go ahead, brother. And persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and to the prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. You shall be brought before kings and rulers for his name's sake. But what? And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Be brought before kings and rulers for his name's sake? Mm -hmm. Kings and rulers? Yeah. Go ahead and continue. Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what ye shall answer. Verse 17. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Kings, rulers, men, everybody gonna hate you. And you be said, but before these seals open up, they shall lay hands on you, right? That's right. What is this telling me? That when I open up the fifth seal, or before these seals start, these saints should be dead already, shouldn't they? Because mm -hmm. he said before this, you're going to be killed. Th these in particular ones. So now, let's see if this going to line up. Let's go now back into Revelation chapter um, 6. <clears throat> to me, this cleared up Revelation 6. They're going to die before the seals open up. So when he opened up this fifth seal, notice what he's going to see. <laughs> Revelation 6 and 9. <laughs> Revelation 6 and 9. And we had opened up the fifth seal. What did he see? I saw under the altar of the souls of them that were slain for the word of, the, of God and for the testimony which they held. He done seen dead saints. Now he done opened up the fifth seal. He see all these dead folk. After the, after the ride of the pill for After... At before they could they died before the pale horse. Before the pale horse. Right, right, right. Now he opened up the seal, he see all these dead folks. Mm -hmm. The souls of the dead. They were the saints. Because right. Christ said they're gonna kill you before these before this before the pestilence and all of that. Mm -hmm. Now he looking and notice what these saints are Peter and them and those who came before that third century AD or C E. Those who were being killed during those times. Notice what they're gonna proclaim. And they cry with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? How long, you, how long will it take for you to avenge our blood, the blood of Peter and Paul and all of the saints and believers who died before the reign of this Roman Empire under uh, when they was, went forth to conquer the name of Christ? How long? Notice this. And white robes were given unto every one of them. Then they said white robes were given to that mixed multitude mm -hmm. who washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb or the nations. Mm -hmm. White robes were given to them as well. Go ahead and read. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Oh, so now they got to go through this time to be killed as well. That's why he said it started with the apostles, but it didn't end. So when he said, oh, you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. They shall kill you and do this and that. You shall be delivered before kings and rulers. It wasn't to stop with the apostles. It just began first with them. So this is the fifth seal. Fifth seal.